Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Achano, and welcome to episode six of Game Programming. Okay, so yesterday we had a huge episode that I definitely don't have time to ever repeat ever again. Um, so this episode will be short, but we, but we will actually be displaying something. Today we're going we're gonna to do something really simple, um, essentially. Um, we're not going to talk too much about this, but what we're going to do is basically fill the entire window black. So at the moment, what we've got, if we just launch our game, we've got, um, well, we've just got this blank window. And as you can see, it's, it's literally just an empty window. There's nothing filling it. There's no graphical anything in here like graphics are not being used this is just the, this is just the standard jframe um you know layout i guess um so what we're going to do do today is actually initialize and you know start rendering a black um just black pixels really to the uh, to the screen so we'll do that um uh doing a few things first of all and i will discuss everything here um what we need to do is we've created this buffer strategy and what we need to do now is this buffer strategy is sweet for handling buffers but what we need to do now is actually apply data to the buffers right because at the moment we've got an empty buffer we've got we've got triple buffering on but they're not accepting data yet so we need to actually start um getting them to accept data or essentially um i guess a different way to put this would be to actually um rather apply the buffer to a graphics object. So all we need to do is type graphics G. Now we'll call it G because, well, first of all, that's a convention, but second of all, it's just, you know, G is gonna stand for graphics. No point typing graphics here. Graphics G is gonna equal BS, so our buffer strategy, dot get draw graphics. Okay, so what does get draw graphics do? Get draw graphics, um, essentially what it does is it, is it creates a link between graphics to which you can write data, and let's just import it by the way. Um, it's basically creating a link between graphics. So in other words, it's creating a link between you being able to actually draw graphics to the screen and the actual buffer strategy, okay? So it's linking the two together. It's, um, I guess it's like, it's, it's creating a graphics context, you know, for the, for the drawing buffer. Um, so that's set, right? What we also need to do, is now that we've in between here and here before we type g dot dispose i'll explain this in a minute this is where and you could even like do a little um uh thing for yourself so that you know i'm not going to do that though um but in between here and here is where you do all of your graphics so any graphics that need to be displayed on the screen must be displayed here before you call g dot dispose so why are we calling g dot dispose and what does it do dispose does exactly what you think it's going to do it just it just disposes of the current graphics now what it does is it essentially releases all your system resources so as you can imagine render is in a loop so what's happening is every time you're setting graphics equal to the buffer strategy what you're doing is every time you're actually creating graphics but at the end of the frame you need to remove those graphics otherwise as, as you can imagine the graphics from each frame aren't going to be removed that's a problem because that will just crash your game eventually after we render every frame we want to um we want to remove uh the graphics that we're not using anymore so we do that by disposing of the graphics and finally what we need to do and this is very important because not only will your game not work if you do this it will crash you need to actually show the buffer now last last time yesterday i explained that what happens is i'm not going to bring up paint again i don't have time but yesterday i explained that what happens is with buffers, you have your screen and then you have buffers that actually render and contain images. Now we need to swap the buffers. Essentially it's called buffer swapping um, or blitting. You could call it blitting as well. Um, basically what, what it's gonna do is it's gonna swap the buffers and you know remove that, that image that we had last time. And I'm sorry, I forgot RSS's on. <laughs> um, Oh, you guys probably won't even see that because I'm not I'm not recording in full screen. Well, I am recording in full screen, but I'll be zooming in. So um yeah. Um essentially what you'll be doing is uh swapping out the buffers. So the buffer that needs to be rendered, right? It's already like it's already com computed, but it's not being displayed. What we need to do is actually, you know, make I guess this next available buffer object actually visible. We need to, we need to display it. If we don't right? It's going to still take up memory and it's just, game's not going to go anywhere. 
and that's a huge problem. So we actually need to be able to release the memory and move because remember a buffer uh, a buffer is a place for temporary storage. We can't keep file we, we can't keep um objects and graphics and pixel data there forever. We need it's only, it's only temporary. It it'll literally be there for probably like honestly maybe a few nanoseconds, a few um a few milliseconds. Um, again, I'm using nanoseconds really, really loosely here because nanoseconds is obviously a very, very um, tiny, uh, you know, section of time. Um, but no, I'll just say milliseconds. Um, it might be less than one millisecond, though, so I don't really want to say that. But anyway, point is, for a period of time, very, very short period of time, we're, we're actually calculating which pixels need to go where, and then we're displaying them straight away. Now, we need to... We need to actually clear the memory and display that those pixels to the screen. And we do that by actually showing the buffer strategy essentially. So we call BS buffer strategy dot show. And what this will do again is it will make the next available buffer visible. It will show the buffer that's been calculated. Now to make the screen black, remember I said that we do all of our graphics here. To make the screen black, all we need to do is first of all, it's going to work by filling a rectangle. So if we call G, so graphics.fill rect, it will actually fill a rectangle um, with a specified color. And again, we define the size of that rectangle. So we define the starting X and Y coordinate, which is 0, 0, 0 X and 0 Y, and then the width and height of the actual rectangle. So because we want to fill a full screen, we want the width to essentially be the same width as our width of our window, which is actually width times scale. So you could type width times scale here. I'm simply going to put get width. Now what get width is, is it's a, it's an integer um, method. It returns an int, it returns an integer. All it does is it's part of the canvas class and possibly even the component class. Actually, I'm not hundred percent sure on that. Just, yeah, it's part of the component class. Um, Essentially what it does is it just returns the size of our window. So get width is probably the best way to ensure you actually fill the entire width. And again, for height, we'll just do get height. So in other words, what this is doing is it's filling a rectangle starting from the point zero, zero, which is at the top left corner, right? Not the bottom left corner, the top left corner uh, in Java. If we get to OpenGL, which we will eventually, Maybe not in this series though, because I, I did promise keeping it library free and making it from scratch, but maybe in like a future series or something, because you guys have, begging, have been begging me for like a year to do OpenGL. Um, in OpenGL and stuff like that, it's actually the bottom left corner. That's zero, zero, but in Java and other computer science stuff, it's the top left. So it's filling a rectangle from the top left coordinate of zero, zero. And the size of that rectangle is width time, is width by height. It's going to fill the whole screen. Now it is filling a rectangle, but we don't know what color it is yet. So what we can do is actually just before that, remember you do this before you fill the rectangle, we want to actually set the color. So we simply call G dot set color. And again, we'll just go color dot black. And uh, there we go. It's going to set the color of, it's just going to set the graphical color to be black. And then whatever follows this, will have that color applied to it. So fill rectangle will have black color applied to it. And uh, that should be it. So remember, our game is being started. We're hitting, we're, we're, we're hitting um, up run equal true. Where, okay, actually, this is a question I want to address right now. Um, you guys are wondering, how is the run method called? We don't actually call the run method anywhere. Why, where is it called? And what happens is because game implements runnable, right? What happens, and it extends canvas, what happens is because it implements runnable, and we've said new thread to be this, when we start the thread, it's automatically going to run the run method. Is that clear? Because that sounds pretty clear to me. Um, so yeah, that's what's going to happen. And again, we're in a loop, so we'll be rendering, and that's how this method gets called. So yeah, let's just hit debug, and we'll see what we get. All right, so I can hear my graphics card squealing right now because it's probably rendering this at a hundred thousand frames per second, uh, which is a good sign. But what's happening is you can see that we've got a black uh, screen right now. And the thing is, like this isn't just we we haven't just changed the color of the JFrame background. We have we haven't just changed the color of the background to be to be black. Um, we're actually full on using the graphics card to actually render an array of black pixels onto the screen. We're actually using the graphics card here 
to fill a, to actually render an image to the screen. So effectively, that's pretty much the first step. So um, try it out for yourself. You guys can have fun changing the colors to whatever you want. If you want a specific color, um, you don't have to go color dot because obviously there's like a limited amount of colors you can choose from here. What you could actually do here is select something like new color. And then in here, you just enter the RGB values. So something like, I don't know, 80 red, 40, uh, 40 green, and like maybe like uh, 100 blue, for example. That would give us, oops, I did that twice. That will give us this nice purple color, for example. All right, I'm just gonna leave it as black though. Um, Cause that's how I roll. And um, yeah, next time we'll probably take a look at actual individual pixel manipulation and stuff like that. And um, again, I'm gonna try and keep these episodes short. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll try and keep them below 10 minutes, definitely. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode of game programming. If you did, please hit that like button. Let me know that you guys are actually appreciating the series. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.